Hello, this is Bryant Myers, and welcome to another episode of Debunking Flat Earth. This is episode three of my review uh, with debating Austin Witsit the other night. And, and tonight we're going to look at this idea of kettle logic, which Austin used a lot during the debate. And what kettle logic is, is it's a logical fallacy when you're making multiple contradicting arguments in an attempt to support a single idea or point. So we'll see in this video, I just want to go through the outline here, we'll see Witsit use kettle logic with his failed electrostatics model of gravity in three ways. The first way, he, he'll say electrostatics is very weak, then he'll say electrostatics is very strong, and then he'll say electrostatics is always attractive, and then he even goes on to say there's no positive negative charge in one instance. So, so let's go through these, and um, I just want to start as before with a little sound bite, and we'll hear what Austin has to say, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Just because things change, thunderstorms or whatever, it doesn't matter because it's electrostatics is super weak. But when something fluctuates between 9.8 meters in square to 9.73, well, okay, because electrostatics is super weak. It's stronger than electrostatics. What it does is it sets the bias. So even if we have slight fluctuation in thunderstorms or lightning or whatever, it's very weak. It's very weak. Like when you use a, a Van der Graaff generator and you make like a little paint chip float or a piece of paper, you can use iron, you can use all kinds of stuff. That's like those little chips are equivalent to like Mount Everest, right? So the point is that it's very, 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 very weak. It just sets the up and down. That's Okay, so that was Austin basically saying electrostatics is very weak. And, and remember, I kind of cornered him in the debate with this whole idea of lightning strikes reversing the polarity and increasing the voltage by a hundredfold. So he basically then goes from saying electrostatics is strong to electrostatics is weak. And I'm starting with the weak example because this is just kind of a review of the last video. Okay, so now let's listen to another sound bite. It's 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity claims to be. So I don't know, I don't know why it's so hard for people to accept it. Well, when you say you try to control for the variable of electrostatics and stuff like that, you can never eliminate it. It's always there. It's 10 to 36 power stronger than gravity claims to be. How could you find a force much smaller than that? Maybe. So we have a downward electric flow on the Earth. Electrostatics is 10 to 36 power stronger than gravity and claims to be. Everything's electrostatic. It's 10 to 36 you power stronger than gravity it. even claims to be. You oh, can't eliminate the variable. Again. So this argument of electrostatics being 10 to the 36 times stronger than gravity is somehow, I don't know, in his mind, he thinks it's some kind of proof that it's got to be electrostatics. Contrasting to what he said about around thunderstorms, now all of a sudden the electro electrostatics is very, very strong. Again, this is kettle logic. He's using this faulty fallacy of logic to explain his failed model in different contradictory situations. So we know with the four forces in nature that these different forces explain all these different situations perfectly. In fact, interestingly, Walter Lewin laid it out for him, the, the strong nuclear force at the atomic level. Then he talks about the electromagnetic force, which definitely is important. And then he talks about gravity. So the problem here is Witz is trying to say everything's electrostatics. So electrostatics now has to take the role of gravity being weak. It's got to take the role of the strong nuclear force, I guess, being always attractive and strong. And then it's got to take the, of course, take the role of electrostatics being stronger than gravity and somehow able to also fulfill the job that nuclear forces do. And, 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 and it can't. It absolutely provably can't. I, I did kind of corner him in the debate with the nuke when he asked me point blank, is everything electrostatics? I said, no. And of course he dismissed gravity. I'm like, okay, well, what about the, the strong nuclear force? And we'll see this little sound bite in a minute, him saying it's always attractive. Using his logic, okay, let's just kind of, he's saying that the electrostatic force is 10 to the 36 times stronger than gravity. And so somehow because it's the, in his mind, I guess the strongest force, then somehow that's got to be the force that governs all other forces. But by that kettle logic, shouldn't we be picking the strong nuclear force as the only force and just saying everything is a strong nuclear force? Because that's the strongest force. The strong nuclear force is 100 times stronger than the, than the electromagnetic force. And yes, both of them are going to be, you know, 10 to the 36, 10 to the 39 power uh, stronger than gravity. Here's what he's not getting. He And then he kind of came right back at me and said, no, the 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 quarks have charge. And I'm like, yes, Wits, that they do. So here's the thing he doesn't get, is that we have kind of three levels with gravity, electromagnetism, or you can say the electroweak force, but we'll just mainly focus on electrostatics, and the strong nuclear force. And we can explain this perfectly with our standard model and general relativity. Even though we don't have a model that combines them all, each of those models work incredibly accurately in their domains. So we basically have mass, attracting mass, which is gravity, and mass is always attractive. So there's just kind of one thing going on with mass. 
that's, that's an, one attractive force. You don't have repulsion. It's always attractive. Now with electrostatics, and this is, again, which it just doesn't seem to get this. Now we still have like an electron and things that are charged. They still have mass, but now charged objects now have a charge. And so we now will use the electromagnetism, you know, Maxwell's equations or quantum electrodynamics. Um, now, but this is the key. When he said he, he's thinking that the electrostatics can explain the strong nuclear forces, it absolutely can't. So let me explain why. In quantum chromodynamics now, we still have mass, we still have charge. So yeah, he's right. Quarks do have a charge, but then they have something new, something different. And that's what's called the strong nuclear force or the color force. And this color charge is not the same at all as the electric charge. They're totally different. They're actually almost as different as the electric charges from mass. So which is just totally confused here. And he's not understanding that, yes, there is electric charge, but the strong nuclear force is 100 times stronger. And this, is, this allows, like in, you know, quark confinement, when you have a proton, you have two um, quarks that are plus two, two thirds charge, and then one quark that's a minus one third, and it gives you a net positive plus one charge. But the strong nuclear force is overcoming the, the, the positive to positive repulsion of the two thirds plus charges. And so, again, this is a hundred times stronger. This is why we can't, no matter how hard we try in atomic accelerators, we can't seem to separate and split these quarks because the force is just so incredibly strong. Now, now interestingly, um, the strong nuclear force kind of, kind of seeps out of the, uh, of, the, of the protons and neutrons, and it gives rise to what's called just the nuclear force. So now this strong this nuclear force now is working to hold the positive uh, protons in the nucleus, and it gives it its size as well. It's very, it's very complex, because at very, very short ranges it's a repulsive, and within a certain range is attractive, and then it becomes repulsive again. But, but the point is, is that this is, this is a charge independent force here. This is not, I mean, a electric charge independent force. It's not the same thing as electric charge. Absolutely not. Okay, so this, this kind of relates to this next sound bite here. So, so, so listen into this. The nuclear force is electric? Yeah. Okay, show me evidence for that. Because okay. it literally for that. does the opposite. It actually oh holds gosh. like charges together. Do you know that like You didn't know that that was electric? Do you not. know that like charges repel? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, but incoherent charges always attract. So incoherent what, what electrostatic what acceleration is always attractive. You have to you have polarization to up. get repulsion. So now we, we, we started with him saying electric charge is very, 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 very weak. With four, He used four varies even in one sense. So he's saying it's very, 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 very weak around thunderstorms. It's, 30, it's 10 to the 36 times stronger than gravity when, of course, that suits him to say that it's like Walter Lewin says, it's got to dominate gravity. But now, when we get to the contradiction of how <laughs> in the nucleus we have positive charges that are being held together when they should be repelling, now all of a sudden, electrostatics is always attractive. Wow, how convenient. I mean, this is kettle logic at its finest. I mean, th this is literally, in the debate, if you looked up the word kettle logic or this logical fallacy in the dictionary, you know, what Witsit did during this debate is literally the definition of kettle logic. It's just a perfect case study. Okay, so I got another good one here. Um, now, I don't know why it is that, you know, Bob at Globebusters, Witsit, you know, some of these other flat earth quote unquote scientists, um, they think that electromagnetism create, can create levitation. So we're going to hear in this next sound bite, Witsit talk about bumblebees and how how pollen is levitating up to them. It's not levitation wits, it's electrostatic force. See, they, they think to think that this is, because everything is electrostatics, that this is somehow like anti-gravity. And again, like I said in the last video, they just don't seem to know how to make a free body diagram. So yes, the pollen is, uh, is attracted to the bee and it does go up. It looks like it's defying gravity, but that's just the electrostatic force. And the force, if you drew a free body diagram on the pollen, the, the force vector from gravity is going to be weaker than the electrostatic force from the B. It's not levitation. And they do the same thing with, with their whole spider balloon argument and their little, little Van der Graaff generator experiments. I mean, it, it's not levitation. It's the electrostatic force. Just, and just learn how to make a free body diagram and understand what a resultant force is. 
I mean, it's really, this is high school physics, guys. When I say guys, I mean Austin, Witsit, Globebusters, all, you know, Dearth, all the people that are using these little science kind of high school um, science fair, and they're not even science fair worthy for high school, really. Um, but, and they just think that this is proof of their model. That's why I'm kind of bringing this up right now. That somehow them doing these little experiments with electrostatics is somehow proving that everything is electrostatics. When I just said, it's, there's, yes, there is electrostatics, there's electro electromagnetism, but there's also gravity, and there's also the strong nuclear force. So let, let's just listen to Austin, the, the sound bite, then we'll kind of wrap it up. Accumulate positive charge, which there's actually no such thing as positive and negative charge. You have charge and discharge. It's a convention. There's nothing negative in nature, but that's a different conversation. So it gets positive charge in the air. It floats over the, the flower that has negative charge, and the pollen will actually levitate up to the bee and stick to it. He, he first he said there's no such thing as positive negative charge, but then he says that there's positive charge in the pollen and then it will levitate up to the bee. Wait a minute, if there's no such thing as positive or negative charge, then how can positive charge levitate up to the bee? So just to conclude here, let's just kind of summarize the kettle logic that Witsit was, was using within the debate. When it suited his model, or when he got back to him to corner, electrostatics was weak around lightning strikes because it has to be, otherwise people would levitate up. Electrostatics was 10 to the 36 times stronger than gravity, stronger than gravity will ever be, or any other force could ever be, uh, when he's saying it's got to dominate and be the only force. Then electrostatics is always attractive to explain the nuclear force, but then electrostatics, somehow, there is no positive or negative charge. Everything is electric discharge, and um, when he's talking about the whole bumblebee thing. And then again, it, it, he just... I mean, literally, the kettle logic is used so many times during this debate, especially with when you're talking about gravity. And I, I picked these four different sound bites to kind of summarize it. And again, let's just kind of conclude the video here, because this is something that anybody that's on the fence, you know, with the whole flat earth idea, really listen to these people and, and just look for this kettle logic, because I promise you it's everywhere in their explanations, where they'll say one thing in one situation, then they'll contradict themselves in another, because their model doesn't work. So thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos coming and I hope you have a great night.